Okay, um, hello everyone. Okay, so let's look more at the scanner class. And I know the other video was um, a bit in, you know, you know, with so ma so many details. But don't worry, you get used to the scanner class, right? All right. So we've, uh, as of now, we've only seen the fun a functionality about the scanner class, right? The scanner objects, right? We've seen a functionality about the scanner object, and we've seen that it has the power to be able to convert the byte info that that the system .in method takes. Okay, the, when we take information from the from the user we know that initially we have it as byte info because that's all the system.in can do and so this kind of class comes to our rescue by giving us a way to create an object from it and the object will have special powers to be able to convert the byte info to the data we need it to be in so so far we've seen next int which basically converts the byte info to an integer right so just as a recap let's start the process again and then we'll look at some other superpowers, right, <laughs> or some other methods. Methods is actually the right technical name for it, but superpowers because, it's, I'm just saying superpowers because it's a fancy way of saying, okay, this is like a special special thing you can do. So let's go ahead and set the process again. In order to use this kind of class, we need to import it, right? So I'm going to import java.util.scanner. I'm importing the scanner class located in the java.util package, right? <clears throat> Sorry. All right. So in my main method, I'm going to go ahead and create a scanner object. I need to first of all create a scanner or a variable, class that variable keyboard. I can call this anything though. This is just a variable name. I spelled it wrong. <laughs> all right. So scanner keyboard. So this is a variable reserved to to hold a scanner object. I'm going to use the new keyword to create a new scanner, passing in the source of input. We know system.in is refers to our keyboard, and once we take in uh, input or information from the from the user that user that way, we are going to have that information saved only as byte information, byt byte. But we will need more than bytes in our programs. We will need numbers. We will need integers. We will need strings. The system.in only gives us bytes. So this is where this kind of object comes to our rescue. We are connecting the system.in, the byte info that the user give, gives us, to this scanner object here because this keyword refers is going to refer to the the new scanner that we are creating, the new scanner object we are creating. So this keyword is going to hold the memory address. It's going to point to the scanner object. And in itself, it's going to have the special powers, right? It's going to have methods defined in the scanner class. It was defined in the scanner class that any object that's created from this scanner class is going to have these superpowers, or basically it's going to have these methods. So, so far we've seen next int, right? So by calling something like keyboard.nextInt, we are using the access operator the dot to access the methods or to access the superpowers that this keyboard has because it was created from the scanner class, right? The scanner class had a definition that, okay, any object that's created for me will have these superpowers so all these methods so one method in the scanner class right that this keyboard or that this object is going this kind of object is going to have is next int which we've seen and next int right is a method it doesn't have anything we'll talk more about methods in the future videos by calling a statement like this it, it's going to pop up a text box to a user and it's going to allow the user to type in something all right and what the, whatever the user types is going to be converted to an integer next int okay it's going to be converted to an integer and it's going to be returned it's going to be thrown back and say it's going to say okay i'm done converting your byte info to an integer where are you to take it where are you right and so i'm going to go ahead and get a variable ready to hold that information when it's done so i'm going to create an int variable and i'm going to call it user number just like we did right and over here I'm going to store that returned value in user number because when it's done it's going to return it back give it back to us and so I'm storing it in user number it's returning an integer so I need to make sure that I have an int variable um, declared to be able to store it in there o otherwise it's going to say hey I'm bringing an integer and you are giving me something else so make sure you are storing a result um, <clears throat> right okay all right so let's look at some other um, scanner class methods but before that let's let's test this right 
there's no message you know before the text box so let's use a regular system sorry I'm typing this bad system dot out dot print Ellen we know the system dot out refers to an output device in this case our monitor and the out method is, is able to you know so the print Ellen method is able to accept in information in this case a string that reads please type a number and System out is referring to our output device, right? And print element method takes this information and be, it's able to print it on our on our output device. In this case, our monitor. So we are displaying this to user. We are using the scanner object to convert whatever the user types in um, to an integer, and then we are storing it in this variable that's declared as an integer over here. And once we have it, we can go ahead and display it. System out dot print element. We are connect we've connected over here the system dot into the keyboard, right? So once we call this, it's going to pop up a text box allowing the user to type in stuff from the keyboard and it's going to accept that information, convert it to an integer, and store it in user number. Okay. So over here, once we have the user number, we can just say you typed space space and then concatenate it to user number. Compile this. Oh, we have an error. Let's just see what happened. All right, it's saying user number cannot be referenced from a static context. Okay, that's probably because I messed up um, the syntax. Um, so let's see. Let's, let me just go through this really quickly. Shovel you tell. Just one second. New scanner over here. Sometimes I miss some of this information. System dot print ln. Keyboard dot next int. I know what this is, right? But but I've you know it's been a while since I saw this error message, so it's keeping me. But it's something probably silly here. Um, so just a moment. Um, I apologize for this. User number. Okay, I see. I see what it is. Oh, uh, that's because over here in my variable, um, as int, you know, I, should, I should have seen this, but it took me. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. You know, because sometimes <laughs> you write code and you miss things like this, so it's 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 normal. So the good thing is I've, I've been able to see it, right? I declared my variable outside of the main method, right? Outside of the main method, so it's telling me I need to. Uh, reference it from from a static con context, right? So all all it's saying is I need to declare my variable in the main method, right? So that you know this is the scope of it. This will be the scope of it. So I'm going to do do that. I'm going to cut this line here and then paste it in my main me main method. That's where I want to declare my variable. All right. So now when I compile this, it should work. All right. All right. So yeah, that was it. Okay. So. I have the user number here and I'm just going to type in the result. You typed user number, run this and it says type a number five, it says you type five. All right, so the other methods I was talking about, we've seen next int, right? Let's go back a bit to next short, right? And it basically, it's ba it basically takes whatever the user types, it, it provides a, pop, a text box, um, it, the user is going to type in something and then it's going to take what the user types and then convert it to a short, right? Which means I need to have a short variable to store it in here, right? If I compile this and I run it, right? If I type in a number, it works right, it works right because we know, that, you know th this is an integer, right? So it will work in this case. But um, in a case like, let's say, um, um, it, it, Remember we were talking about the conversions when you when you when you are you know when you are because because you know a short is in the range of an int that's why we're able to we're able to see it work, but if you're trying to store let's say an int in a short that's when you have a problem because a short can't handle an int, but this is an integer and so it can store a short because a short right is a smaller range and an int is a bigger range and that's why we don't have any problems. But in general, you want to make sure that you're converting it over here to a short. So you want to make sure you ha you have a short variable to 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 store it. 
Um, otherwise, you know, you, in some cases, you may you may run through a problem. But in, but the, the previous example we had over here when it was an int is fine. But just make sure you are storing your variables well. So compile this, and this this works also. All right. So the next method will be. So there's next. Um, there's next byte also, right? So we need to make sure this is also declared as a byte. Compile it. It takes whatever user types, converts it to a byte, and then returns it. And you're storing it in user number, declared as a byte. So I'm just going to type in two. Type in two. There's also next int which we've seen, and then there's next long after that. So next long, we have to make sure that the variable that's going to receive Okay, the user input converted to a long has you know but we need to make sure that variables are also long. So convert, compile this, run, type in a number, sixty-seven. You type in sixty-seven. All right. So there's also next float. We need to make sure that this variable is a float. Compile this. It's going to uh, expect a float. Let's see, fifty-six. You type in fifty-six point zero. It converts whatever the user types to a float. All right. There's also next double. We need to make sure that the variable that's going to receive the user's input converted to a double is also a double. So I've done that. Compile, run. I'm going to type in 57, and it says you type in 57.0. Converted whatever you gave it to a double. All right. Um, there is also next line. Next line. And basically, next line converts whatever user types to a string, right? It converts that next line, that line, whatever it is, the user types. Um, so we'll, we'll, t we'll, look, we'll talk more about next line. And there's also another one called next. We'll talk more about that in a future video. But for now, just think of next line as it returns whatever whatever the user types, okay? As a string, okay? As a string. There's a, there's another one called next, <coughs> which um, does something similar, but you know a bit special, which we'll cover. So don't worry about it. But next line converts whatever the user types as a string. We need to make sure that this now is of type string. We need to declare it from the string class, which means this is going to be a variable that's going to hold a string object, right? So this variable now is going to hold the memory address. Remember, class type variables don't hold the data directly, they hold the memory address. So this user number is now going to refer to the memory address of the string, okay? That's going to be returned from the next line method, right? It's going to take whatever the user types convert it to a string object and return that string object to a variable. We need to make sure that variable is declared as a string, right? So that we need to make sure we have a variable, a class type variable to hold that string object. So use the user number will hold the memory address of that string. And then now we can print out user number, right? In this case, it's a string, right? But it's called user number. Compile this, run it, enter a number, and it says you type six. So these are the other methods. Um, so notice that uh, when we're going through, through the methods, we didn't have any mechanism or any method for converting the user's input to a single character. Remember, we had a type of data type char or, or car, however you pronounce it. There, 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 is, you know, there isn't any method to do that, and so we need to work around it. And in the next video, we'll, we'll talk about how to do that, how to convert the user's input to a single character. Okay. All right. So just play around with this. Um, we will see more practical use of, use of this in the future, but then at least you know how it works in some sense. If you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right then. Bye-bye.